hey, hey, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. My name is Dana, a.k.a. Matt Caster. My friends call me Pod. This particular video right here, guys, goes along with the audio clip that I have up on my website. What you're going to see is the recording I made with the ATR2100 dynamic USB microphone. Okay, this is my workflow. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is come over here and make sure that I have my Ripple editing turned on. Now, guys, I've got all kinds of templates. Okay, I got them with stock plugins uh, for the ACX, uh, the podcasting. This one right here, I believe, has 12 tracks on it. Then I've got a standard, which has one track. Then I've got one for LibriVox, which is proof listening that has all of my... Uh, analysis, uh, meters, analytics, and, and things of that nature. And then if I record, uh, when I go up there for LibriVox, I use this one. And then I have one for the online video courses. Okay? So, this is the template. When I open this up, all this comes up with it. Okay? So, the first thing we're going to do is look right down here after I click play, and we're going to watch my meter. Now, I'm going to come up here and left mouse click. Hold down the left mouse. I'm going to pull it over. I'm going to come up and click this button. That's a loop button. Now, when I hit play, that is going to stay inside that window. Now, look down here at this meter. You see that negative 70.3? That's my noise floor. Okay. Now, my input levels when I recorded this was in between a negative 12 and negative 18 dBs. So, I'm starting off with my noise floor at a negative 70. Now, I already told you in the audio, uh, it's I think 11 degrees outside right now. My heater is running, my, my furnace. It's approximately 6 foot directly above where I'm recording this. I am 30 feet from the main drag that runs through my community. I'm on the first floor of a three-story condo. There are children above me on the second floor playing. I can hear them as I record this. Okay, so what do I do now that I've explained everything? I just want you to kind of watch as I go along, and I'm going to show you what I do. The first thing I'm going to do is grab this track, just left mouse click it. And I'm going to drag it somewhere over close to a number. I'm going to bring this over here. Now I'm going to take my mouse wheel and I'm going to scroll forward. This will never leave my viewing area. Doesn't matter. I can bring it in. I can bring it out. It will never leave my viewing area. So I'm going to move this track over here and get it close. Now why am I doing this? Well, because... With the ACX, they want one second or a half a second on the head of your file. So now I can simply come over here. See how I'm in between that mark and this mark, the tick mark? I can come right here, do the same thing. I'm going to hit S on my keyboard, which is going to split the track, and I'm going to delete it. See how that track went all the way over there by itself? Now I'm going to slide it all the way over. That's what's referred to as ripple editing. Okay, so now I'm going to come back to the beginning. I'm going to zoom out again, and I'm going to make me another window. Now I'm going to come down here to the track and turn on my FX effects. Now the EQ is simply nothing more than a high pass and low pass filter. My high pass is set around 80 hertz. And my low pass is set at 59.98. Those are the frequencies. Okay. And I'm going to show you why. I'm going to jump outside this window. Watch what happens when I play this now in this meter. Watch, what, watch where the, the frequencies come in at. Hey, hey, hey. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. My name is Dana. You see how they all die out right there? Well, I don't need the rest of those frequencies in my recording. If I don't need it, I take them out. Okay. Now, I'm going to come up to Reefer. I want to show you something here as well. I'm going to turn off the EQ. I'm going to come back to the beginning of the track, and now I'm going to trap this. 
This is what Audacity uses as their noise removal tool. Okay, but I want to play this and I just want you to keep your eye on this meter. You see over here at the low end? Now look guys, this goes down to a negative 120 dBs. Look where that's at to begin with. It's at a negative 84. But as you can see now, it starts to rise on the lower frequencies. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this. I'm going to turn the EQ back on. And now I'm going to play it again. Look at it now. That's why you use a high pass filter on your audio recordings. It takes out the mud, the rumbling. It takes out just the ickiness of those lower frequencies. Now, if I was recording a bass drum or an instrument that had, you know, the low acoustics, I would not do this. But for the voice, it's a must. Okay? This is your first tip. What you're going to see here, you can apply to any recording software. And if you do this, guys, it's going to improve your recording 100%. So now I'm going to check the box. And now I'm going to build my profile. And you just let it go. Now I'm going to stop it. I'm going to uncheck the box. And now let's look at our noise floor down here again. Right now it's on Affinity. You see, guys, now it's a negative 90.1. I literally just took 20 dBs of trash off the low end of my file. Okay? So, at this point, what I do is I'm going to come over to the master channel, and I'm going to work with these plugins. Now, I'm going to take the tri-leveler. This is a plugin. It works with the RMS system, which is root mean squared. I don't need the low cut filter, so I'm going to bring it all the way over. I don't need the high pass filter. I'm going to bring it all the way over. Everything else stays stock. Okay, that's all I've got to do. Set it and forget it. The next thing I'm going to do is bring up my gate. Now, this is, does not come stock with Reaper. This is a Wave product. But I absolutely love it. Now, if I'm doing work for the ACX, I do not use this gate. I'm simply bringing it up to show you how it works. Nine times out of ten, I do not use this on my recordings. And let's just play. And you're going to see this red line go up and down. When I'm not speaking, it's going to shut the gate. And this is where people get into problems. They have background noise, and they think they can gate it out. Well, as you speak, that background noise is going to come right in with your audio. And when you're silent, yes, the gate will come on, and it'll do its job. But what happens is this. Your listeners will hear dead silence, and then as you start to speak, they will hear that noise come right through embedded with your voice. You've got to be very careful when you use a gate. So let's go ahead and just watch it work and see what it does. Hey, 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 good morning, good evening, good afternoon. My name is Dana, a.k.a. Matt Caster. My friends call me Pod. Guys, what you're listening, okay? So enough about the gate. And I'm going to go ahead and just turn that off. Now, the next plugin I have is called the DC filter. There are no adjustments to this. It is simply just a, another high pass filter. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. It all depends on what I'm recording. Okay, but for right now, we're going to turn it off. So I'm using basically three plugins I'm using the high pass, low pass. I'm using the Reifer Noise Cleaner. And honestly, guys, watch this. I'm going to turn it off as well. This is what the ACX refers to as over-processing. 
If you don't need the plugins, don't use it. Now, um, we're, you know, let's watch the meter one more time down here. Let me go ahead and get it back to infinity. You see, guys, it's still on infinity. Okay. Now, normally I would go through and I would listen to my file. But I do want to come over here now and show you this. Look how nice and even that waveform is. Okay. Now, if you have a peak limiter installed in your chain, this is what it's going to go by. Now, in Reaper, it's very simple. I can come in here. I can hit the S key here, the S key here, and the S key here. Now, I can take these peaks and drop them right down with the rest of the audio. See, now I've got them leveled out. But I'm going to double-click them, put them back to where they were. And I want you to listen to this Peter Piper pick the peck of pickled peppers, okay? And I'm going to say the same thing. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. How many peppers did Peter Piper pick? Now, if you come up here and you... So, if you have this, just go ahead and drop these down. Regardless of what software you use. Make them run even as much as you can with the rest of your file. Now, at this point, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to render this file. We're going to call it 22. I've got it in a stereo channel. I'm going to move that to mono. Uh, MP3 is fine. If I was doing it for the ACX, I'd have it at 192. If I was doing it for Levervox, I'd have it in a 128. If I was doing it for my own podcast because I host my own files, I'd have it in a 96 but we're going to put it on 128 for now. Now I'm going to check this box. So after this file renders, it's going to automatically load it right back into Reaper. Okay, that way I don't have to go hunt it down. Now I'm going to bring the auto statistics back up, and I'm going to render this file. And that's it. Now, if I was not satisfied with this, if I did not like these numbers, I would click back and I would still be able to use that file name. But once I click close, it's a done deal. I cannot go back and change it. Okay. But look at my numbers. My noise floor is a negative 109 dBs. My RMS level is a negative 22.04. My true peak is a negative 3.5, and my DC offset now, remember, ones, tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, okay? It's so minute, a dog could not pick it up with their hearing. This is well above the human hearing range, okay? So I like these numbers. So I'm going to hit close, and there's my file, okay? Now, remember the peaks? Remember where we cut them out right here? Look how nice and pretty that is, okay? Now, let's right mouse click it, and we're going to open it up in Audacity. Real simple. We're going to come up to Analyze, Nyquist, ACX Check. Past, past, past. But look what Audacity did. It added noise back into my file. You see that negative 84.4 dB? Now the ACX, they only require a negative 60 max. You know, we've just exceeded that with flying colors. But this is Audacity. What I just showed you with a, a USB dynamic mic recorded in the Reaper, you cannot do with Audacity and right there's the proof right in front of your eyes, okay? So, we don't need to save that. That's it, guys. I'm done. So, how does it sound? You tell me. I'm just going to play a little of it because you've already heard it before. And, you know, you see what you think. I'm going to solo the track. And this is what it sounds like with a $79 USB dynamic microphone. Guys, what you're listening to today is a 
ATR2100. It has both the USB capabilities as well as the XLR capabilities. So if you ever decide that you want to upgrade your recording situation, all right, and that's it. Take care, God bless, and we are out of here.